Welcome everyone, I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this is Tabletop Simulator with Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, I'm doing this again. I actually had a lot of fun just playing it solo, um, and I figured I would go ahead and try to play this game with the minimum number of players as possible, which is three. And uh, I've, I mean, I usually, I've done it before um, uh, with classmates and stuff when I was just trying to teach them the game and stuff and things like that, and it definitely does change things up a little bit, um, but... Uh, yeah, I figured to see. We'll see how it plays out, and just go from there. Um, so, I've already kind of looked at all the characters and was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to, um, uh, what I wanted to do with, it, um, what characters I wanted to pick. Um, last time we did the Silent Leader gameplay, and uh, this time around we don't have Silent Leader. It's not even available uh, for three players, so it's not even an option. Um, but uh, the last time we played, I think every single character had piloting. Every single one, including the including the Cylon leader. So this time around, we're going to go with no piloting at all. I think that's going to be the way we're going to go here. Now, I already know what... Um, I'm going to be going with... Um, since I'm not going to go with any pilots at all, I'm going to have a political leader, a uh, military leader, and a, and a support. And I already know which ones. So really, I just want to know which one I want to go first in what order. So we're just going to start from top to bottom. Political leader first. Roll the six. Military leader. Roll the three. And then support is a five. Okay. So it's going to go political leader, support, and then the uh, military leader. So for political leader, I'm going to go with Tory Foster. Uh, Toy Foster has adaptable, uh, which is the where anytime a action is done on a quorum card, um, you c you draw two skill cards of your choice, and they can be outside your skill set. Um, her once per game is she can examine the top five cards of the quorum deck and return them to the top of the deck in any order I choose, even if you're not the, currently the president. Um, and then her negative trait is a moral, where anytime it's her turn. And the card says current player chooses, she has to pick the first option. She does not get a choice. Uh, it's only on things that say current player chooses. If it's something that's like, you know, CAG chooses or president chooses or admiral chooses, she'll still get the pick, even if it's her turn. Um, the other disadvantage with Tori Foster is like her ability, that adaptable is really good, uh, especially for a president. Um, the problem is, is Tori Foster, if you're playing in a, you know, four or five person group, uh, her line of secession for uh, presidency is second to last for, um, when it comes to political leaders. The only person that's lower than her is, is Ellen Tai. So if anyone else goes political leader, they're going to get steal presidency, which is not the end of the world. But Tori Foster by herself is a lot. If she is president, she can def she has full control over her, you know, positive ability. Otherwise, she has to rely on another player to do it. Um, all right, so political leader, and then I was going to go support, and then the other for the support. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Anastasia D. Uh, I went over the videos just to make sure I didn't do a duplicate. Um, the Silent Leader gameplay, we didn't have a support at all. Um, the, the first game we did, we had Chief, um, who's kind of a common pick. Um, D is actually usually who I pick if I do play support. Um, her gimmick is um, whenever she uses a communications, uh, instead of just looking at two civilian ships, she gets to look at all of them and then move them. So she definitely has a lot of control when it comes to civvy ships. Um, her once per game is she, before making a skill check, look at the top three cards of any skill deck, uh, even outside your skill set, and you can either add them all to your hand or to the skill check. Her negative trait, though, is if morale is ever two or less, she will get executed immediately. And if, But the good news is, that even if you're human, you don't lose the morale. But yeah, she just dies if, <laughs> if morale gets too low. Um, I... I've only seen some of the of the TV series, um, so I can only guess about some of these like qualities about uh, some of these characters. I'm guessing she committed suicide at some point, but I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're gonna go with three players. Uh, so we got D, and then the last one's gonna be a military leader. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go Tom Zarek. I usually don't mess with Tom Zarek, but uh, uh, we did Louis already. Um, I think we did William Adama at some point. Oh, no, we did, no, we did Carl, and we've done Louis. Um, on the videos I scrapped, I actually did Adama and Helena. 
You know what? I might now. I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna play a character I haven't played before. Uh, these other two characters are characters I usually play. Tom Zarek is someone I've never played as before. So, Tom Zarek. Um, each time a, a player draws a mutiny card, you instead look at the top two cards of the mutiny deck and give one to that player and place the other at the bottom of the deck. So he has like full control over mutiny cards here. Um, his abuse of power is his once per game, where he can draw four mutiny cards, play one, and the rest go get put in the bottom of the deck. Uh, you ignore the necessary steps ability, so you don't have it, so you don't you don't get the trigger your your uh, your constant effect, and you don't get sense of the brick for doing it. Um, and then his deck trade is he starts the mutiny card, so we'll be drawing a mutiny card right off the bat for him. All right, uh, so that's all taken care of. Let's go ahead and delete all. Well, we don't delete them because we might need them if they get killed. So we'll do a little bit of that. A little bit of this. There we go. Okay, so we've got all that. Let's go ahead and get everyone a little bit closer to the action here. So obviously it's going to be pretty simple for presidency and all that. Uh, presidency goes to Dory Foster. Admiral's going to go to uh, Tom Zarek, which is probably terrifying. Also, the nukes should be with the Admiral, not the CAG. Also, I always forget to turn off the hands when I'm playing by myself. Uh, enabled. Okay, yeah, that turned it off. Okay, yeah, it's turned off. All right. Um, oops. We do need to place these characters too, so we need to do that real quick. Uh, Tori Foster starts out in the press room. Press room is up here on the uh, Capital One. Uh, Anastasia D starts out in communications, which makes sense because that's her kind of her thing. And then Tom Zarek starts out in weapons control, which is actually a really good starting part point. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and shuffle the quorum cards and draw one for our president. Except prophecy, draw one skill card of any type. And uh, when a player activates administration, okay, so it's just a way of. Let's see, keep this card in play when a character activates administration or chooses the president with the Admiral's quarters location. Increase the difficulty by two, then discard it. What's administration? Does that card actually do anything anymore? It technically, I don't think it actually does anything anymore. Oh, it, actually, sorry, it works with the Admiral's quarters as well. Okay, so it does have a use. Because yeah, admi um, administration has been changed. It, no longer, it used to be a skill check that allows you to get rid of, uh, essentially vote somebody off uh, from presidency. All right, uh, the CAG. So let me, good thing I have my freaking books here. Forgot to grab them, but they're nearby. So uh, we need to figure out who our CAG is. Uh, daybreak, here it is. So CAG, because we don't have a pilot, and CAG is going to be mostly useless. I mean, it still has responsibilities, but you're not, we're not going to get anything fancy from it. All right. All right, Tori Foster is 24th in line, so not him, or not her, sorry. Tom Zarek, the military leader, is 16th. And Anastasia D is 14th, so she is Admiral, or, or sorry, she's CAG, for what it's worth. So there you go, she is CAG D, which I guess makes sense since she you know, commands the, she can do communications and all that good stuff. All right, got all that, got all that, got the dukes. Kind of trying to remember what my setup was. Uh, we'll move these over. All right, we've already shuffled the quorum cards. We'll shuffle the mutiny cards and give one to Tom Zarek. He starts with bait and switch, draw two skill cards, then shuffle two treachery cards into the destiny deck and discard this card. Okay, not the best card, but it's not the worst. All right. Nukes, nukes, nukes. And one of these. Okay, and then we'll put you up here. Obviously, I can do this off screen, but screw you all. All right, and let's put them down here for now. 
All right. So we got those. Uh, we need to grab some of these counters, which I always forget to set up. There we go. And then copy. And then one, two, three. Oop. We don't actually need this many because we have one less player. All right. So color tint. Apply. Okay. So first player is Toy Foster. Here's our once per games. Okay, next, uh, we need to get ourselves these Vipers out onto the field. Shuffle civilian ships and put out two. Bring out a base star and three raiders. Okay, everything else is set up there. Uh, we need to shuffle the crisis, the treachery, the politics, the leadership, the tactics, the piloting, the engineering. Uh, this time around, I did remember to remove the card from the destination deck that doesn't apply to here with the one with the scar. Super Crisis needs to be shuffled. Pegasus damage needs to be shuffled. Galactical damage needs to be shuffled. Okay, so that's all that's been shuffled. Uh, now we need to do uh, loyalty cards. So let's do that real quick. Uh, loyalty cards, we need um, five. Uh, we need a. We need five, not a Cylons. And we are doing Exodus expansion, so six, not a Cylons. Uh, we are not using the Mutineer, so we'll go ahead and delete that. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. And then one Cylon card. And then shuffle. And one, two, and three. All right, everyone's not a Cylon. Theoretically, it is possible to have no Cylon at all, but uh, it's pretty unlikely. But yeah, uh, we got that going. So let's go ahead and do first turn of play. Oh, actually, we need to do uh, starting cards. Uh, we'll have D start out with... We'll do two, two engineering and one leadership. That's a pretty good start. Okay, and then uh, Tom Zarek, I'm gonna have him start with I'm gonna have him start with three tactics. So remember, it's three of any color as long as it's within your skill set. All right, uh, Tori Foster, of course, is the first player, so she's just going to draw as normal. So three politics. Right off the bat, she gets political prowess, which is her top political card. One leadership. And one tactics. Okay, not too bad. So we're going to start pretty simple here. I'm just going to go straight into uh, the quorum chamber. And I'm going to activate it. So if you are the president, Draw one quorum card, and then you can either draw one additional quorum card or play one from your hand. So I'm going to draw a quorum card. Repair up to one location and two damage vipers, then discard this card. Uh, that's pretty good. Repair up to one location, two damaged vipers. It does location and viper, so I might go ahead and save it. Um, I could then either draw another card, or I can... Um, play one from her, her hand. I'm going to go ahead and play Accept Prophecy and then keep it in play. So yeah, I'll go ahead and play Accept Prophecy. We'll put it uh, over here beside the Presidency. Make sure it's used. I'll tap it, I guess. Uh, we'll draw one skill card of any set. It may be outside your skill set. Uh, we technically have no piloting, <laughs> so I could play that. Uh, Let's go with, um, I'm a pretty big fan of kind of seeing what everyone else has. Yeah, we'll go engineering. So we'll go ahead and draw an engineering card. So I get a repair. And then 
After any player uses the action on a quorum card, you may draw two skill cards of your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some more engineering. I'll draw one engineering and one tactics, actually. Like so. Okay. And that's it for her turn. So she got a bunch of cards from that, for, essentially for free almost. And then uh, we need to draw a crisis. Did I shuffle destination? Well, now it is. All right, crisis. First crisis of the game. Admiral chooses. Admiral chooses another player to send to sick bay. The Admiral then look, uh, look at one of that character's loyalty cards at random. Uh, the Admiral discards two skill cards, then the current player discards three skill cards. All right, well, um, look, getting, a, getting access to uh, so the Admiral's, uh, getting access to loyalty cards is pretty good. So he's, so Tom Zarek has to make the call here. Um, he is going to go ahead and pick the first option, and he's going to go ahead and send another player to sick bay and send Tori to sick bay. And then he's going to see that person uh, look at one random loyalty card um, in her possession, which she only has one. So he can now confirm that Tori is definitely not a Cylon. Now, Tom Zarek can definitely say that, hey, this person's not a Cylon. Of course, he can also lie if he was, you know, trying to fix somebody out. And, okay, and then it goes to uh, uh, Cylons. They're going to shoot, the base star is going to fire at the Galactica. So, it's four to eight if it hits, or for a hit. So, we'll put it right here for now. Boop. All right, that is a hit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pick the Pegasus to take the hit for now. Actually, is there a limit? Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, we'll pick the Pegasus. We've already shuffled it. Uh, that is the main batteries. So main batteries are out for now. And that is it for the turn. So that's been resolved. Uh, we will put the card up here like we usually do. And it goes to uh, D. D gets a draw all of our cards, so we'll go one engineering, three tactics, Okay, and then one leadership. Okay, not bad. All right, so she's got a few options. Uh, she would like to repair some stuff, but she might go ahead and do some other stuff first. Yeah, so what she's going to go ahead and do, she's going to go ahead and do critical situation. So her movement is now in action. Nudge this down a little bit. I'm just nudging these down so they don't overlap with the discard pile. Okay, uh, so yeah, two actions now. Uh, she's going to go ahead and use one of her actions to activate communications. She gets to look at any, any number of civilian ships and move them. It's not just two because of her ability. So this one has two population. This one has population and fuel in it, so both of these are pretty hefty uh, civvy ships that we don't want to lose. She's going to go ahead and move them down to here uh, to keep them safe. Uh, then for her, uh, her actual action, she'll go ahead and do executive orders on uh, Tori Foster. Since all players know this is a three-player game and Tom says that uh, Tori is clean, there's no reason for her to doubt him. I mean, even if, even if Tom was a, Z a Cylon, I mean... There's only one Cylon in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and do executive orders on Tori. So Tori is going to go ahead and she's either gets two actions or a move in an action. She's going to go ahead and get herself out of sick bay. Uh, she's going to go ahead and move back to the quorum chamber. She has to discard one card. Um, she will discard... Mm, she'll discard a consolidate power. All right, and then for her action, she's going to go ahead and activate the quorum chamber again. And draw a corn card. Discard two random skill cards and draw two treasure cards, then gain either one food or fuel and discard this card. Pretty good. Uh, but I think what she's going to go ahead and do is go ahead and do resources for Galactica and play it. So uh, repair one location and two damage vipers. So she's going to go ahead and repair this location. 
So shuffle that back in. And we'll prepare some Mark, sev uh, mark 7s. Alright, and since she activated, uh, anytime a quorum card has been activated through an action card, which all of them are action cards, um, she will go ahead and get two cards of her choice. So she will get... Uh, Uh, she's going to go ahead and get herself some more. Actually, she'll go ahead and grab. Yeah, the problem is with three players, there's going to be some skill gaps no matter what. We'll, uh... She'll go ahead and grab herself some engineering. So, so calculations and Raptor spe specialist. Okay, uh, so that was uh, executive order has been used. Um, that means D's turn is over. We'll go ahead and draw another crisis. Jump computer failure. Passes no effect. Uh, failure is minus one population and move the fleet token one space towards the towards uh, the start of the jump preparation track. We're already at the beginning, so. Really, it's just if we fail, we lose a population, which we're at 12 at the moment. All right. Uh, we do need to make a... This is a skill check, so we will go ahead and add two from each color. No one's really eager to lose a population at this point. Population is the resource that uh, the humans have the most of, but it's also one that can catch up to you very quickly. And it's kind of hard to restore. Okay, we'll add two from this. It's uh, The difficulty is seven, and it only takes purples and blues. We do have purples and, we do have some purples and blues available to us. Uh, let's see, is there anything? Uh, what we'll go ahead and do here is, uh, yeah, what we'll do is, uh, she's going to go ahead and do Jerry Rig, which is Reckless, so we need to reveal the top card here. Uh, if it's zero, we have to activate them. So let me make sure I did that correctly. I believe that's how it works. So if it's zero, you have to do both of them. So place two raiders in front of the Galactica. So two more raiders. And then a civilian ship in the back. So those have been resolved. Okay. Uh, but the difficulty is now reduced by four, so it's now a three. So we'll put that over there for now. And uh, it's going to go Tom Zarek first. He doesn't really care too much about this. Does kind of want to pass it at this point because it'll suck to fail it. And he's going next anyway. So yeah, he'll put one card in. Uh, Tori will it's blue, so yeah, she'll put two cards in. She doesn't really want to go playing around with repairs anyway, so put the two in there. And then it goes to D, and D is just going to go... Two of these cards. Okay. Shuffle, shuffle. Let's see what we got. All right, Iron Will, which is as long as we get within four. So as long as, we're, as, long as we have negative one or higher, we don't have to check out the fail effect. But if we do get negative, uh, it will reduce morale. Uh, this is from the um, this is from the Destiny deck. That is plus five, plus seven, plus nine, and that's also from the Destiny deck. So yeah, this is this is just a this is a victory. <laughs> uh, we got ten points just from the Destiny deck, um, which is pretty rare for that to happen, especially with the colors that were expected. It was more. It was more likely to get negatives than positives, so we passed.
Didn't really need the Iron Will, but that's okay. Um, and then the Reckless resolves. Okay. Uh, jump Computer Failure. Uh, the final part of it is uh, Raiders Deploy. So three Raiders will deploy from each base star. So now there is a small uh, galactic army here uh, waiting for us. We still haven't gotten any jump prep. And uh, there is a army out there. So uh, that resolves that turn. Goes to Tom Zarek. Tom Zarek will get two politics. Two leadership. That is not a leadership. Why is there? Wait. Two leadership. I, did I? I think I grabbed it from here somehow. Or maybe I grabbed it from here. I don't know. I accidentally grabbed a card, probably from the, either from the wrong deck or there was some weird things happening. Anyway, uh, we'll just ignore it. Well, actually, that was a it was a tactics anyway, and I needed one tactics anyway, so I'll just grab it because that was weird. Sometimes it lags a little bit, so that's probably what happened. Anyway. Uh, do, 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 do. No one's drawn a mutiny card, blah blah blah. I start with a mutiny card, which will add treachery cards to the destiny deck if we play with it. Now, Tom is concerned about that base star and the swarm of raiders that is waiting for us. He does have a strategic planning. And we could wipe these things out immediately. But they're also not really doing anything. So what we can do is try to just blow up a bunch of them. But honestly, I think a nuke is probably better at this point. Just blast everything out of there. So he's going to go ahead and do, uh, he'll stay in the same position he is right now. And he's going to go ahead and fire a nuke. So nuke will go here. So really early to fire a nuke, but sometimes it's the best option after all that's happened. And then he's going to go ahead and do um, uh, strategic planning. Actually, Tori, uh, actually, Tori will play her strategic planning. So strategic planning, which is plus two. You can only play one for each roll. And then uh, we'll go ahead and roll it. That is two plus two, which brings it up to four, which, on four, which will just destroy a base star. Uh, calculations could be played, but it wouldn't really change anything. So base star is destroyed. Nuke is gone. We could potentially get another nuke back, so it's not the end of the world. But I was kind of hoping for something a little bit better. All right, well, that's it for that. So crisis. President chooses. You must choose another title a player to receive the president title, or the current player is executed. Or the president discards two cards, and the current player discards three cards. Uh, Tori does not want to give anyone the presidency because it's literally her, her ability. Everyone knows, um, does believe that she's not a Cylon, and she'd rather not be executed. So she's going to go ahead and pick the second option, which is she needs to discard two and the current player needs to discard three. Not the best situation, but it could be a lot worse. So we'll discard those, and one of those. So three from Tom Zarek. And then two from Tori Foster. So launch scout and consolidate power. Okay. All right, that's all been resolved. Um, next is Raiders Activate. Uh, closest uh, civil, civil ships are actually down here in the bottom right. So all of these are gonna rotate downwards to this one little Viper. Okay, um, and then we do get a jump prep. Boop. All right, one moment. All right, we're keeping up pace here, so we'll just go and go ahead and keep pressing on. It's Toy Foster's turn. She's gonna go ahead and draw her three politics. And uh, so that was the three to politics. And then one leadership and one tactics. All right. So we got a few options here. None of which are great. 
we can have Tom Zarek. Uh, he, so a few options we can do is we can do executive orders and try to get Tom Zarek to shoot some shit down. Or we just let those let those raiders keep circling after they blow up the Viper inevitably. Um, she's gonna go ahead and stick to her guns here. She'll uh, activate her current location, so Quorum Chamber, draw a Quorum card. Choose a character and send them to the brig. That's not helpful. And then. Okay. And then she's going to go ahead and play Unsavory Connections. Get herself. Discard two random skill cards. Oh, actually, no, that's terrible. Because that will. Yeah, that's all bad. So she's just going to draw a second Quorum card. There you go. And that is it for her. So it's going to go straight to Crisis. President chooses. You need to do minus one morale or minus one fuel, food, and plus one population. Uh, she's just going to take... Th oh man, morale's always going to be a danger. Yeah, she's going to go for morale. And then Raiders activate. So... We're just going to start with this Viper and see how long it lasts. That, I believe, already takes it out. It is damaged. So there are no rerolls, unfortunately, available. And then the other remaining Vipers, or Raiders, will move down to here. So things are going to get real ugly real quick if we don't get rid of these things somehow. Okay. And jump prep increased. And it goes to uh, D here. And Dee's going to go ahead and draw herself some leadership, some tactics, and some engineering. All right. All right, at this point, she's just going to go ahead and uh, hop over to command and activate two unmanned vipers. She's going to go with the Vi Viper Mark 7s. Send one out. Well, the other option is she shoots one down, tries to shoot down some Vite Raiders. But I think right now she's going to take send out one Mark 7 and then shoot uh, one of the Raiders. Shooting a raider, that is a hit, so one is destroyed. Okay, so there you go. Only, you know, six raiders now. Okay, so crisis. Sleep depri depri deprivation. Admiral chooses return all undamaged vipers on the game board to the reserves, then send the current player to sickbay or minus one morale. That's not pretty. But morale is also something we don't want to mess with. We do get a jump prep, and we could try to force a jump. I think that's what uh, Tom Zarek would probably do. All right. So current play is going to get sent to sick bay. Every all undamaged vipers will go to reserves, and then um, base star will fire. There are no base stars, so it's going to go add a base star to six is up here. Pursuit track. Uh, D is the CAG, so she needs to add a civvy ship to a location. She'll add one to uh, this location, I guess. Uh, we do get a jump prep, which is uh, where we can actually do something with it. And yeah, it goes to Tom's Eric. Tom's Eric will draw cards. Politics. Politics. Do leadership. Uh, one tactics. Okay. So what Tom Zarek's going to go ahead and do is he's going straight to FTL control and he's going to force this jump. He's going to go ahead and do strategic planning. To increase his die result by two. And essentially, uh, if it's a six or lower, um, we're going to lose three population uh, from forcing this jump. So here goes nothing. 
Well, that's a one. Uh, there's no way to stop that, so we're going to lose three population. Which is brutal, but it was either that or risk all the civvy ships. So he's going to go ahead and hop to the other screen. Uh, we do jump, so there is that. Uh, Admiral does get to look at the top two destination cards and pick one. Okay, that goes on the bottom. Lose one fuel and one morale. Well, that is uh, not a choice. So, okay. So we got two distance from that. Uh, crisis is going to happen now. Yeah, if, if we hadn't done that, we would have lost a lot more than that. We would have lost uh, three population and a fuel. All right, Admiral chooses. Destroy one Raptor and the current player sends a sick bay or minus one morale. All right, uh, we'll destroy a Raptor. One Raptor destroyed. He goes a sick bay. All right, Raiders are going to activate. Uh, we'll add a Raider to four, which is down here. Pursuit track increases by one. Uh, we do get a jump prep, and it goes to uh, goes to Tori Foster. All right, Tori has a gajillion cards. Okay. And uh, we do get one tactics. Okay. So for her turn, she does need to get some people out of uh, out of sick bay. She also has a million cards. So yeah, she'll go ahead and play executive order on D. Uh, D is going to go ahead and head off to command and then activate some unmanned vipers she'll activate one and then have one escort the civvy ship away okay and then that resolves that then crisis current player chooses she has to pick the first option all right so yeah, Tori, it's, her, it's Tori's turn, so this is her crisis. She has to, it, When it says current player chooses, her negative trait kicks in. She has to pick the first option, so we have to do the skill check. But it is yellow, purple, and blue, so it's probably not that bad. All right, well, first person is going to be D. She does have some purples. And she's gonna end up drawing more of them, so she'll put some. She'll put some in. Uh, the DC is nine, by the way. Uh, Tom Zarek does have some cards to play around with. He'll put two in. And then Tori, of course, has a million cards. Um, so uh, we could have done guts to initiative, but. I don't think we really need it. Also, I could have done preventative policy, but I never predict correctly, so I never do it. Popular influence is pretty good. All right, she'll go with this and see what happens. I don't think there's anything else she wants to mess around with. All right, let's see what we get. Plus one. Plus two. Plus four. Plus nine. Plus 11. 
uh, plus 13, uh, plus 15, plus 12. Oh, no, sorry, that's a, that's a blue. So uh, plus 18 and plus 20. So the uh, Destiny deck has been playing really nice. And since we have three players, the, the turns cycle pretty quickly. So um, throwing extra cards is not usually the end of the world. But yeah, uh, that is a pass, so no effect. Raiders do activate again. We'll add one to five, which is up here. We add two more civvy ships, which have to be put in empty locations, which is not good. Oh, jeez, I picked up the entire thing. That's why I was like, why is it shuffling? It should be only one. All right, jump prep increases. Uh, we're about to have a bunch of people on us. All right, goes to uh, D. D will draw, well, oop, thank you, lag. One leadership, three tactics. And one engineering. Okay. All right, uh, she's currently in the command. Which, I mean, she, Tom does need to kind of be able to move, but at the same time, D kind of needs to step things up. So, yeah, she's going to do a critical situation. So she has two actions now. And she's going to go ahead and activate command. And she's going to go ahead and send out a Mark 7 to this location and escort this ship away. Like so. Okay, so that's resolved. And then she still has another action. So she's going to go ahead and activate uh, Command again. She's going to deploy regular Viper and escort this ship away. All right, and then that is it for her. Okay, uh, then Crisis. Current player chooses. Um, each player discards two skill cards and draws two treasury, or you can do a skill check where People can be sent to the brig. You also can look at a random loyalty card of a of any player, which is not really anything they need. So, yeah, she'll just discard some uh, skill cards. So she'll discard a launch scout and an XL, and then she draws two treasury. Ah, grab that. There you go. Tom Zarek has to discard two cards. Uh, I'll discard that one. And that one. Okay. Then Tori Foster needs to discard some cards too. She'll discard that one. And got some initiative. Uh, actually, no. All hands on deck. And draws to treasury. All right, that resolves it. Goes to uh, heavy raiders, which is going to add a heavy raider to one, which is in the back. And then everything is going to get sent over. Everything's coming up, mill house. All right. And then heavy raider there. Okay, and then we do get a jump prep, and that's it. Goes to Tom's Eric. Tom can only draw one card of his choice, of, as long as it's a, a color he uses. Um, he'll pick leadership. Okay, and he's going to go ahead and get himself out of there. Um, he's going to go ahead and move to... 
FTL control just in case. Then he's going to go ahead and play executive order on D. Because that is something that needs to happen right now. All right, so D has two actions or a move and an action. She's going to go ahead and uh, fire away. So she's going to go ahead and shoot at... There's not really many options here. Well, there's plenty of options. It's just I don't know which one to go for first. All right, so first action, we'll go ahead and activate this Viper. So we're activating command, so we activate, get two activations. So we'll start with this sector that has the least. Uh, these things get shoot down on a three, so that's one. And two. So these two are gone. Okay. Okay, next I will, act, uh, for my other action, I'll activate command again. And this time I'll activate the, the one of the Vipers down here and start shooting this down. That's one. And two. All right, so we're thinning out the herd a little bit. Okay, that resolves the exile crisis. Current player ch uh, chooses. You can um, do a skill check or you can roll a die. A four or lower is minus one population. Um, or we can do a skill check. Uh, he'll go ahead and roll the die. Tori is going to go ahead and play strategic planning to give plus two to it. And we'll see what we get. All right, that was a pass. Didn't need the strategic planning. Nothing bad happens. Uh, raiders do activate, though. Uh, when it's equal distance, they always go clockwise. So this one's going to go to there. And then these four are going to fire. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with Mark II first as the target. Uh, it always goes after unmanned vipers, but other than that, it's the current player chooses. Uh, that is a damaged, so one damaged. Four is a miss. Five is a miss on a mark seven. And that's a miss. So I believe that's everything. Yep. So... Lost a Viper, but this one's still holding strong. Uh, or we got some civvy ships in trouble again. Uh, we do get a jump prep. So we'll go ahead and up that again. And it goes to back to Tori. Tori will get her politics. One leadership. One tactics. Cat's trying to get on the desk. Okay, so she is got some options, not the best options, but we have options. And my cat is saying hello. Uh, we don't have an exile. We do have state of emergency, which I could have used in combination with the that one card. So I guess I should have used it. Um, the other option, of course, is I can draw two quorum cards and see what happens. But one, th one way or the other, we need to um, we need to get something going on here. So we're going to do this. We're going to do a uh, state of emergency. We're going to lose one food. And then uh, starting with the player who played this card and proceed clockwise. She goes, So she goes first. Um, she's going to go ahead and... She's going to go ahead and do Popular Influence. Draw two quorum cards and then choose one to give the presidents. Then either player discard the other one. She's the president anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Hmm. All right. So... Choose one to give to the president, then either player or discard the other. 
she'll keep, uh, she'll take, give the president the execute prisoner, and then she'll play the established dogs will. So we'll gain one population, but we we'll lose one morale. And then since we activated that, we do get two cards of our choice. Uh, we will pick. Uh, she'll take some uh, piloting at this point, mainly for the evasive maneuvers. Okay, and then that is all resolved, and then goes to D. D gets one action. She's going to go ahead and activate command and move a viper. Uh, can't do it that way. All right, what she's gonna go ahead and do is move this viper. Uh, Mark sevens can move two spaces. So she's gonna move it to there and then escort that ship off. I think that's the only, I think that's the only requirement for Exodus. I'm just making sure. For Exodus. That's conflicted loyalties. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's been occupied or not. Or it's currently engaged by a raider. Okay, so that's all she did. That resolves. Goes to Tom Zarek. Tom Zarek is going to go ahead and just activate FTL and get the hell out of here. Uh, Tom, uh, Tori Foster is going to go ahead and play strategic planning to add two to the roll. Five plus two is seven, so no population lost. That resolves. That resolves. Uh, this hasn't resolved just yet. Um, all of these get returned to reserves. And then all this goes to the base star, uh, goes to uh, Silent Fleet Board. Okay. Then we draw two destination cards and see what we get. One and two. Okay. Um, lose one fuel, then place two civilian ships behind Galactica and one base star in front of Galactica. Damage the base star once. I think we'll. I think we want the derelict base star. I'll hopefully keep things uh, a little bit under control. So that's going to do that. Uh, we're going to get a base start of the front, two civvy ships in the back. Uh, make sure we shuffle that first. Two civvy ships in the back. All right, uh, we do need to do the um, sleeper phase right now. So let's do it right now. So everyone's going to draw a loyalty card. See what we get. All right. Well, that means uh, there is no Cylon, at least right now, at least until someone gets executed by accident. So with this, we actually have pretty good control. That's uh, strange. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, sure enough. Um, it is possible with Exodus that you could have um, no Cylon player. Um, now, the Exodus does have other mechanics that you could play with, like uh, personal goals and things like that. Uh, personal goals are kind of like human players that also have their own little objective they have to do, kind of like a Cylon leader almost. Uh, but I don't play with those. So, uh, yeah, um, for the most part, yeah, there's no, uh, there's not going to be a Cylon uh now that also means if anyone dies, they're going to become the Cylon, because anyone that dies gets to draw a new loyalty card. But uh, yeah, we'll see what that happens. I mean, if that's the case, yeah, I'll, pl I'll, get to, I'll play as is and see how it goes. Anyway, uh, so that means everyone's that. Uh, we resolved all of that. There's no Mutineer. Uh, that means, yeah, that's all been resolved. Uh, now we draw a crisis. 
president chooses, minus two food or minus one food and minus one population. Um, we'll go minus one food, minus one population. Yeah, there's been some, I mean, some people have done gameplay where they, um, where uh, as a silent player, they literally just don't do anything and just let the players kill themselves. And that's definitely something that can happen. Anyway, raiders activate. Um, there is a base draw on the board, so what's going to happen is two raiders will deploy. We'll just confirm that real quick. Well, of course, my cat's getting grumpy because I keep sliding the the, the roll bucks from out out from under her. Uh, if there are place one raider, blah 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 blah. Okay, so it's standard play. So I believe it adds two, but I want to make sure. Uh, if there are no raiders, two raiders are launched from each base star. So yeah, two raiders have been added. We do get a jump prep, and nothing else bad happens. All right, and that takes care of that. That was all Tori Foster's turn. Tori Foster needs to discard cards. Um, she'll discard the personal vices, and then she will support, uh, discard support the people. She would like to discard bait, but that's not something she can do. Let's discard that. All right, and next turn is going to be uh, going to be D. And we'll go ahead and call this a video. I am the Depressed Dealer. This was Battlestar Galactica on Tabletop Simulator. And uh, it's going to be all humans all the time here. See you guys next time.